Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to Prep Medic. Many of you guys know that I'm a huge proponent of the cat tourniquet and the soft T wide. However, these are not for everyone and they do come with some very significant drawbacks. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the flaws of these two tourniquets and then give you some TCCC approved alternatives. Both these tourniquets are great tourniquets. They're both combat proven and they're both COTCCC approved tourniquets. However, a lot of the flaws with these two devices have not been well advertised on social media. So today I wanna to bring attention to some of those flaws so that you can evaluate if this will work for you or if you need one of the three alternatives I'm gonna be giving you. So let's start with the cat tourniquet because that's kind of the most common. It's what I've used uh, on my kits over the years and I really like this device. However, its biggest flaw in my opinion is the fact that it is Velcro only. That is the only thing that holds this buckle in place. So when you tighten it down, if that Velcro is not sealed, if you get a lot of mud, blood, water on that Velcro, it's going to loosen, it's not going to secure appropriately. Now, anybody that's applying a tourniquet is probably not in ideal conditions in a hospital, so this is something you should take into account. The second issue with this is going to be the windlass. So as you're tightening this windlass, you have to turn it multiple times and you don't have the ability to let go of that. So maybe you're injured doing self-application, it's hard for you to muster the strength. Maybe you have arthritis in your fingers or have trouble with grip strength. It's going to be hard to tighten this to the point and get it locked in this bracket. So those are the two main issues I see with this tourniquet. Now. On the other hand, we have the soft T wide. So this tourniquet, once again, it's a great tourniquet. However, this only has a friction lock in place. So as you do this, sometimes it's hard to do self-application. You have to take your arm, you have to pin it to a wall, or you have to take your arm and pin it close to your body. This is fine and good when you're not injured, but say that bullet or whatever caused you to have an arterial bleed went through your humerus, it's gonna be really hard for you to muster the energy to pull that into your side will be very painful. Same with smushing your arm up against the wall or the floor, that's going to be insanely painful. And it's gonna be really hard to tighten on yourself. The Softy Wide also has the same windlass mechanism as the cat tourniquet. So as you turn it, there's no safe place. You can't just let this go because it's going to unwind. You're gonna to have to start all over again. That's going to slow application. Now, this is one of the older versions, so it doesn't have the bracket here to catch the windlass. However, with both of them, it's still a challenge to get the windlass locked into this triangle. So these three tourniquets are all COTCCC approved and they fix some of the issues with the two tourniquets that I just mentioned. So right here we have the SAM medical tourniquet. Now this looks like a cat style tourniquet. It's got the windlass there, it's got the Velcro strap. However, it directly addresses the issue with only having Velcro securing for the tourniquet. As you pull this tight, you're going to get that first initial tightening and there are going to be two pegs that lock into this strap. And then you're gonna fold it over on itself and it's going to adhere to the Velcro. So this is important in a couple different ways. Number one, the most important part of applying a tourniquet is pulling the band tight regardless of what kind of windlass or ratcheting mechanism it has. So you're able to tell that you are tight enough to get occlusion with only a couple turns of the windlass. Number two, as it locks into place, if you have a lot of blood, dirt, or other things in the Velcro, it's not going to stop it from adhering to itself. Now I would say this is more of a backup mechanism to keep it tight. I wouldn't just trust this on its own, but in a pinch, if you have that issue, it's going to work really well for you. Now, the one unfortunate part of this is it still has this uh, windless mechanism, and I've actually found this is a little bit harder to turn than say your cat tourniquet, but not substantially so. So it does not address the windless issue, but if you don't have a hand strength issue, you're confident in your ability to turn it. I think this is going to work really great for you. All right, next on the list, we have the RMT, the Ratcheting Medical Tourniquet. Now this is a completely different style from the CAT, the Soft T, and the SAM Tourniquet because it has a snowboard binding, essentially, as its windlass. What this will allow you to do is as you tighten it, you can let go of this and it's not going to lose its place. You tighten this until you get blood flow stopped and you're done. So it kind of eliminates that issue for people that have decreased hand strength or are in severe amounts of pain that keeps them from turning that windlass consistently as it goes. The other thing it addresses is the issue with the soft T wide. This is a very similar friction lock. There's no Velcro on here. And when you put this on, 
you don't have to take your arm and pin it to your side or mash it into a wall to get it tight. You have this little band here that you can bite down on and you can pull this strap, it's going to get it tight and then you can start tightening the windlass itself. I also, and this might be more anecdotal, I believe this has a little bit more travel in the tightening than any of these three options. So if you don't get this completely tight on the first try, I believe you can make up for it a little bit with this ratcheting mechanism here. Now, of course, the one disadvantage of this is, is that there's no way to disconnect this loop. So if you have an entrapped extremity and you need to put, put a tourniquet on, it's going to be really hard for you to unloop this and get it back, especially under stress. So if they added, say, a clip of some kind like the Softy Wide has or added the ability to take it completely out, I think that would be perfect. As it stands now, this isn't going to go over an entrapped extremity very well, and you're gonna to have to use a lot of fine motor skills, which are not great in these super stressful situations. I think this tourniquet is great for somebody that's scuba diving in a really wet environment, just because this nylon's gonna hold up, there's no Velcro anywhere on it, and this is going to work no matter what. It can also fold down pretty small, so it's not going to be quite as small as a flat folded softy wide, but if you bring that down, this can fit in almost any pouch or pocket pretty well. Now lastly, on this list, we have the TX3. So the TX3 is almost the exact same thing as the RMT, except it's a lot thicker. This is excellent because the wider a tourniquet is, the lower the occlusion pressure has to be to stop that bleeding. Now, one thing to note though, is that while this band will cause lower occlusion pressures, the entire thing is not this wide. As you ratchet it down, the tension point here will be about this wide, which is adequate. However, it doesn't give you the full advantage of this strap. Like before, you can't take this out. You can, it can just be relatively difficult. It has the bite strap here, so you don't need to mash it into the wall. And then it has the snowboard binding that we can tighten it relatively easily. There's no such thing as a perfect tourniquet. A scuba diver is gonna have different requirements than a combat medic, than a flight medic, than a EMT, lifeguard, you name it. So it's really important that you look at the devices on the market and you pick something that works best for you. I would always recommend staying within the Committee for Tactical Combat Casualty Care's guidelines just because they've done the testing and they have pretty good evidence to support what they put out. I will leave all the links in the description. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below and I will see you next week.